Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dork Side. I'm the Dork in the Road and today I want to talk to you about some options for dual sport and adventure bikes for people who are maybe not so tall. That's right everyone, I am the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you don't miss out on awesome new content just like this. Dual sport and adventure riders come in all shapes and sizes. It's one of the coolest things about this sport is that it appeals to people from a wide range of backgrounds, abilities, and height. Height? Heights. Multiple distances from the ground. But it is a sad fact of off-road motorcycling that dual sport and adventure bikes tend to be tall because you need that additional suspension travel and ground clearance to deal with the literal ups and downs that come with riding off the pavement. Those motorcycle seats that are three feet tall can create difficulties for people who have shorter legs. When I first started riding tall bikes like the DRZ 400 with its nearly 37 inch seat height intimidated the crap out of me. I was like, how could I ever ride that bike on uneven terrain? There's no way I could even get my feet down. And confidence is so important for a new rider and a, and a learning rider, especially off-road, and there's nothing more confidence-inspiring than knowing that you're going to be able to get your feet flat on the ground if you need to, if you get into uneven terrain. Also, one more thing worth considering is narrower bikes can be easier to ride than wider bikes, even if the seat height is a little higher, because the more of a straight line to the ground you have for your leg, the easier it is to get your feet down. So I just want you to keep in mind as you're looking that seat height is not the end all be all because a narrower adventure bike like the Africa Twin is quite a bit easier to get your feet down, even if the seat height's a little bit higher than some wider bikes with lower seat heights. And the other thing to know, and this is a hard truth to understand when you're first starting out, but a shorter rider can handle a taller bike. As your skills grow and as you build your confidence, you will find that that being able to get your feet flat on the ground matters a lot less when you're just putting your feet on the ground a lot less. When you build the confidence to keep your feet on the pegs and just ride over things instead of worrying about getting your feet down, seat height will start to intimidate you less. But if you're looking for motorcycles that can take you off road and have lower seat height so that you can have that confidence inspiring ability to get your feet down, even if you're a shorter rider, here are some recommendations of places to start and bikes to look at. So we're going to talk about both dual sport and adventure bikes, but let's start with dual sports. First, First is the Yamaha XT250. The Yamaha XT250 has a seat height of 31.9 inches. That's pretty low as far as dual sports are concerned. It weighs 291 pounds and it is a 249cc fuel injected bike. The XT250 it has a reputation as a great trail bike. It's a Yamaha, so it's reliable, it's fuel injected. It's got a lot of those modern features that some other dual sports don't have. That's one bike I would consider if you're looking for a capable dual sport with the lower seat height. And another one that I would recommend to you is its cousin the Yamaha TW200, which has a 31.1 inch seat height, weighs 278 pounds, and has a 196 cc carbureted engine. The T-Dubs in particular is a very popular bike. It's a cult favorite. It's very old school. Design hasn't changed in 30 years, but it's got that big fat rear ATV tire, which lends you a little bit of extra traction if that's something you're into. And these are both low seat height, pretty capable dual sports that will take you on the road and in the woods and on the trails if you want them to. So those are the shortest of the short. There's not a lot under 32 inches in terms of seat height stock, but a couple others to consider if you're willing to expand your horizons a little bit, and trust me when I say that you can probably handle a little bit taller bike than you think you can, but I would recommend checking out the Suzuki DR200. I've ridden one. My dad had one. Uh, it's got a 33.3 inch seat height. It's 199 cc's and weighs 278 pounds. Or the old tried and true, the one that I went with when I was first starting out as a dual sport rider who was intimidated by tall bikes, the Honda CRF250L. Seat height's a little taller, 34.4 inches, but again, it's that narrowness, it's that width of the bike. And I think you're gonna find, once you get onto it, two things really factor in. That narrowness, like I said, and the way that the suspension sags, when you sit on it, your feet are closer to the ground than it looks when you stand next to the bike. The 250L's got 249cc engine, weighs 320 pounds, and you can find them used, so I would, I would recommend checking it out. Whatever bike you decide you're interested in, definitely sit on it, because that suspension sag is a factor. So as long as you can get on the bike, and you can, you just put your foot on the foot peg and swing your leg over, once your weight is on it, you're gonna lose an inch or more of that intimidating seat height. So definitely sit on bikes before you rule them out. Number one rule of thumb. Those are dual sports, a few dual sports that I would recommend for shorter riders. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more highway capable and comfortable, then maybe you want to consider an adventure bike. Adventure bikes with low seat heights are also kind of slim pickings, but in my research, I did find a few you might want to take a look at. First adventure bike to consider, if you're looking for one with a low seat height, is the Triumph Tiger 800 XRX Low. You can get this 
from the factory, from the dealership, if you can get the low version, with a seat height of 29.9 inches. That is very low, but it's factory, it's set up that way. So worth checking out if you're if you're into Triumphs, if you want to ride a British bike and there's a Triumph dealer near you. I, you, I think you'll have a little bit more trouble maybe finding one used, but if you want to buy a new bike and spend the money, they're not cheap, that's one option. You can get it, like I said, from the factory, 29.9 inch seat height. Another option, a little bit more readily available on the used market is the old BMW GS650. It also came in a factory low version, but I think probably what you're most likely going to find out there is the standard height, which is 31 inches or so, 31, 31.5. That's pretty low, especially for an adventure bike. So uh, GS650, worth looking into. Another one to check out, one I've ridden, and I actually have a video which I will link for you up here. That is the Honda CB500X. Now, you're getting more into the, this is a touring bike and less of an adventure bike territory, but the 500X with the right tires and setup can handle gravel roads and getting you off the beaten path a little bit too. So check out my test ride video, like I said, but the CB500X is a great bike with a 32.8 inch seat height, very reliable, easy to ride, unintimidating for a new rider. One more short-ish, and again, nothing is like super short in here, but lower, so it's less intimidating bike I would consider, or I would recommend to you, is the Suzuki V-Strom with a, with a seat height of 30. 2.9 inches depending on which year but they're all right around that a 645 cc 470 pound bike so it's a big bike but as adventure bikes go it's one of the easier to handle uh, and beginner friendly i've ridden one they're really fun great bike uh, so check out the v-strom and go sit on one if you can after filming i realized i missed a really obvious choice and that is the royal enfield himalayan with a seat height of 31.5 inches and a very low price definitely worth considering if you're looking for an adventure type bike that can take you on and off road and now back to your regularly scheduled video keep in mind there are mods that can lower the seat height of any bike for you you can get a lowering link for most dual sports and drop the forks accordingly to keep it level this changes the suspension dynamics a little bit reduces your ground clearance and can change the handling on the bike so I personally am not a huge fan of those but I can see the appeal and if you're especially just trying to get started that maybe is something you could get put on till you build your confidence up and then take off if you wanted to I would maybe push you more towards trying to ride the bike as it's set up the way that the engineers designed it but it is an option a better way to lower the seat height of an existing bike rather than adjusting the suspension like that is a low seat if you can find one you can sometimes buy an aftermarket low seat that's an inch or more lower and that'll help you get your feet down you're giving up a little bit of comfort but on a dual sport bike you're standing up a lot anyway so it's not as huge of a deal so maybe look for a low seat if there's a bike you already have or a bike you're interested in that's a little tall for what you're comfortable with right now like i said you will grow into a taller bike you will as your skills improve find that you can handle a taller bike than you think that you can that it's less intimidating than it seems right now but confidence is the most important thing and if you just don't have it yet it's hard to to get out on something you're not confident on and build confidence. So confidence is more important than capability, especially early on. So start with the bike that you're comfortable with and maybe grow into one that's a little taller and switch eventually like I did. It might be what you end up doing. This is not every bike with a low seat height in the dual sport or adventure category. My advice to you is always 100% of the time, go sit on any bike you're interested in and sit on bikes you think you might not be interested in because you might find they just fit you. Motorcycling is as much about feel as it is stats on paper. You don't know until you you've sat on and, and ideally ridden multiple bikes or the bikes that you're considering. That was it for me with the 250L. Like I thought, oh, it's gonna be too tall. It's gonna be underpowered. I went and sat on it. It was not too tall and it was not underpowered. And I knew right then that was the motorcycle that I was gonna buy. Whereas before I was on the fence. So ride them if you can always give them a test ride. That's the best way, the only way you're gonna know what you're gonna feel most confident on. Those are my suggestions for places to start and ideas for short riders who are looking to get into dual sport and adventure motorcycling. If you're looking for more ideas about good dual sport and adventure bikes for beginners, check out my best dual sport bikes for beginners video and my best small adventure bikes for beginners videos, which I will link in the description below for you. Also, before I let you go, I just wanna take a minute to give a shout out to my channel members and patrons, without whom content like this would not be possible. Channel members get early access to videos, merchandise, discounts, and other perks. So if you're interested, check out that join button right below this video. Oh, and don't forget to check out dorkintheroad.com for all your dorky motorcycling needs. Okay, enough commercial. For now, and as always, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! Yay! My hood is funky. Okay, I have a funky hood. Gotta be professional my very business-like sweatshirt.